Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we're tackling classroom management. This can be very challenging for a new teacher, and we have some tips and tricks for you to help you in your classroom. Let's get started. All right, so today's video is all about classroom management and how to maximize instruction in your classroom where you are focusing more on teaching and less on behavior management. So this video is gonna be broken up into a few sections today and we're gonna go through some overarching ideas, but then we're gonna get into the nitty gritty and actual applications and strategies you can use in your classroom as soon as you're done watching this video. All right, so let's talk about some overarching just philosophies about classroom management. There are a couple of things I want you to focus on when thinking about this in your classroom. The first thing is to focus on instruction. Now, I know when you think about classroom management, you're thinking about behavior and getting kids to mind you and all of that. Well, that's not necessarily the right approach to classroom management. Instead of thinking of it in a way to get students to do what they're supposed to do or to stop acting up, instead think about it as a way of increasing effective instruction. For example, the less you are worrying about behavior and transitions and kind of mitigating any sort of problems that are happening in the classroom, the more time you can focus on your instruction. So really the approach should be less on getting students to do what you want them to do and more on how can I help my students behave in a way so that instruction and their experience in the classroom is maximized and the most positive for student achievement. So kind of think about it in that way. Do we get frustrated? Is it about behavior? Is it about getting so-and-so to sit down and be quiet? Yes, of course it is. But in the grand scheme of things, the reason why we want, you know, a nice managed classroom is because it is more efficient to give students instruction in this kind of an environment. So that's how I want you to frame it, okay? So the first piece is focus on instruction. Focus on practices that are going to help you increase effective instruction. Now the second piece of an overarching theme when it comes to classroom management that I think is important is the term respect. Now, this can be very difficult because as you come in as an adult in a classroom or in a position of power, you almost kind of demand respect right off the bat. And I understand that. You're the adult, you're the teacher, students should respect you. But in the real world, people do not respect people until there is a reason to respect that person. So try not to go into a classroom setting thinking, well, I'm the teacher and what I say goes and they need to respect me no matter what. I understand feeling that way, but that's not the way things happen in real life. Instead, show respect to your students. Now this comes in a variety of ways and this is a video about classroom management and not necessarily on relationships, but you want to make your students feel welcome in the classroom. You want to make your students feel like they are an integral part of the classroom. And the more you can bring students in and make them part of the planning and give them the respect they deserve, the more respect they're going to show you. Now that doesn't mean you're a pushover. That doesn't mean you're their friend. That does not mean you know, you're know you're breaking down you know very important boundaries between you and the student. But what it means is, is that you are giving them the respect they deserve and they in turn will give you the respect you deserve. Everybody has a bad day. Everybody has, you know, situations at home. There are things that none of us can see about one another. And so just make sure rather than thinking, you know, I deserve the respect of this classroom, more you know, bring it to a more positive note. I'm gonna show my respect to my students and in turn, they're gonna show that respect back to me. It's social learning theory and it's embedded in basically all of our interactions, okay? So come at it like that. That being said, students still need to respect you as their instructor and they need to follow the rules of the classroom in order for things to move smoothly. But coming at them with a more respectful nature will help you get to that point. And the third overarching philosophy that we like to talk about in terms of classroom management is setting clear expectations. Now, this obviously is something that all teachers need to do, right? And it sounds obvious, like I'm gonna set clear expectations for sure. But what happens a lot of the time when we're in a classroom setting is we know what our expectations are, but the students don't. And then the students don't meet those expectations and then we get upset as teachers and we think, God, these kids are disrespectful or geez, I can't even do a fun activity because they mess it up every time. You might wanna check your expectations and make sure you're being very explicit 
in what you want students to do. This will set them up for success and you up for success. So think of it in a way that you're going into a, into a room where no, nobody knows anything that you, you want them to do. And this has to do with not just little kids, but middle school kids and high school kids. And I've even experienced this in teaching teachers. If I go into a situation and I don't have a clear roadmap of what we're doing that day, even teachers are like, what do you want me to do? What, what's going on here? And it can become very chatty and very chaotic. And that's with adults who are not trying to disrespect me. They just don't know what my expectations are. It's the same thing with students. If you have an activity planned where there's gonna be a lot of moving around, or if it's just your daily activities, you need to set the expectations in the beginning very clearly, and everybody needs to understand them. And that might mean really going over them, you know, really beating them into the ground. You might think, oh, we've got this, but they might not be clear. So be sure you set those expectations. We're going to talk specifically about that. I'm gonna give you some real tangible examples on how to do that, but that is, is very, very important. So really quick, let's recap. These are the three overarching philosophies that I think are really important for classroom management. First, focus on the instruction. Frame it as positive. I'm not trying to get my kids to do what I say. I'm not trying to get them to stop talking. What I'm trying to do is maximize instruction. And with a properly managed classroom, students get the most out of my instruction and I get the most out of them. And I can then assess their abilities and meet their sp very specific needs, okay? So that's very important. The second thing is respect. Respect is not just given because you're the teacher. You have to give respect. And again, that doesn't mean being a pushover or bending or taking down very important boundaries between you and the student. But instead, it means you giving your students the respect they deserve and using that social learning theory where that respect will come back to you. They will emulate you. They will do what, how you, they will act how you act, okay? And then finally, the third overarching classroom management philosophy is going to be setting clear expectations. Set your students up for success so they know exactly what you want them to do. Now in the next section of the video, we are going to talk about how to apply those three things in actual classroom settings.